Let me see your pumpkins. Love it. See, this is where you can pretend that you carved it. I mean, I did carve it, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to still get his head in there because we, well, we, yeah, we did have to carve a slightly bigger hole. But this is like the most professional thing I've ever had. Did you have a hand putting up the banner, though, Zoe? I was trying to do it myself, but I was like, oh my god, it's so big. And I, I feel like if I just put this up in the bedroom, Alfie will love it. <laughs> Hi, platform. I'm Zoe Sugg. And I'm Amy McCulloch, and we're the authors of The Magpie Society. And today, we are going to play Never Have I Ever. So first one, Never Have I Ever fancied a character from a book. Okay, I had to drink. <laughs> Water. <laughs> I am not going to lie, I crushed on many characters, <laughs> fictional characters, <laughs> but Never have I had a bigger crush than the one on Jamie Fraser from Outlander. Oh, see, I've not read this. The book, man, is delicious, but also the television <laughs> character. <laughs> if you haven't watched that show, honestly, the first season is so good. And in fact, I love Jamie Fraser so much that I have to stop the first season after eight episodes. I can't watch the ninth episode because it's too horrendous to Jamie and I refuse to allow my precious man to endure what he has to endure in episode nine. I love that. You create your own ending. <laughs> so like the first crush I feel like I had were the Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging series by Louise Renison and that yeah. was on Robbie aka the sex god. Did you ever <laughs> oh, read yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading those. I must have been 10 or 11 and I just felt like he was just the ultimate dreamboat and I wished that I had a boyfriend like him. I kind of noticed as we were writing uh, One for Sorrow though that all of the men in our books are extremely handsome. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we at one point say like We just movies. write, we write, we write in characters that we have crushes <laughs> on as well. <laughs> I know, I feel like we had a, a voice note conversation at one point where I was like, I think we need to make some of these male characters less dreamy. Yeah, more pretty. <laughs> Give them yeah. some other characteristics other than just being really hot. Okay, how about never have I ever pretended I read a book to look intelligent? No, I've never done this. And I'll tell not? you why. I don't see the point of pretending when the person who's asking you, who probably is quite intelligent and has read the book, could question you on said book and you don't have a reply. It's like in all those teen movies or like, you know that episode of Friends where she doesn't read the book? Oh yeah, and she's like, Jane Eyre and the robots. <laughs> yeah, and she doesn't know and they pick on her to answer the question. To be honest, I haven't, I don't really do that either. And there's a whole like literary canon that I haven't read because I, I love sci-fi and fantasy. So I've read loads of that, but like there's a lot of like literary fiction that I've just never read, including like all the books you were supposed to have read in school. Like, I don't know, like Lord of the Flies or I don't know, To Kill a Mockingbird. I haven't read any of those. <laughs> I probably should get on that. Never have I ever been so scared of a book I've had to hide it in the fridge. <laughs> I, I have to hold my hands up and say I did not understand this initially, <laughs> this question. But it is the Friends reference, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so Maddie actually filled me in because I was like, this is the most bizarre never have I ever. Maddie was like, no, it's the Friends. <laughs> uh, I've never put a book in the fridge, but I have been really scared of a book. Actually, it's one I read really recently. It's uh, called Harrow Lake. Uh, Cat have, yeah, I have this in my bookshelf, like in my to to be read pile. Yeah, uh, well, you should if you're interested in like spooky read, especially like around now around Halloween, it is perfect because it is so creepy. It's all about like jitterbugs and the Mr. Jitters and one of those properly like creepy Ooh. crawly books, you know? Like I feel like it takes a lot for me to be scared. Like mm. I I love horror. I love horror films scary books. That's it, true, it, you're it much more into it. Lot, it. Yeah, it would take a lot for me to hide a book in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the scariest book you've ever read? Do you know? Have you read any Stephen King? Have you read any like... No, I haven't it. actually. Obviously it, I've it, seen it. It is quite scary to read as well. It's chunky, but it's quite scary to read, I have to say. <laughs> I read one um, for a book club that was called Frozen Charlotte. Frozen yes, we were still at a book club, yeah. That was creepy. Yeah, but that was I loved so it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, never have I ever ruined a friend's book that they've lent to me. No, I haven't done this either. <laughs> We're so nice to our friends and their uh, books. So nice to our friends, but so nice to the books because, you know, books are precious. <laughs> I'm just, I'm one of these people that I feel like if I lend someone a book, 
I expect it to come back as I lent it. So I am very careful of books when people lend them to me. Never have I ever secretly hated a character that everybody else loves. Mm. <gasps> I really want to know who. So um, I hate Jon Snow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's because I uh, I actually love the, the like the, the scenes in the north. I like anything that's like cold and, I, and everything. But I was like, Jon Snow is not my hero. I like so many of the others. And all those. See, I've never read or I I started watching Game of Thrones, but I didn't get fully into it. But no. I do know that in Game of Thrones, the TV series, Jon Snow is quite hot. He is hot. Yeah. 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 I don't have a character that I've secretly hated that everyone else loves. No. Have you ever had no. any other character that you hated? Um. I don't, not that I can think of off the top of my head, so clearly I didn't hate them enough. Never have I ever not seen an obvious twist coming that everyone else got. Mm. Oh. I mean, I feel like it was an obvious twist and then when I read it, I was like, oh, the couple next door. Oh. By yeah. Shari Fina. Yeah, Shari Fina, yeah. I love her books. Yeah, yeah. And that book, I knew so many people had read it and everyone was recommending it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna read this. It was one of those books I just could not put down. I always try and play detective and I think, oh, I've got this dust. I know exactly what's gonna happen. And that was one of those books where I got it so wrong. Oh, and really? I was so like shocked yeah. by the twist. Oh, that's um, fun though. I when you watch it, like, do that, that's really fun. Yeah, I kind of like when that happens. I like when you think you predicted it, but you, ha you actually haven't. Yeah, for sure. Never have I ever preferred the screen adaptation to the book. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm so interested to know who yours, which one yours is. Well, one of them is Jaws. Oh, interesting. Yes. yes. Have you ever read the Jaws book? I haven't read the Jaws book, but I've seen Jaws. Yeah. So, so Jaws is like classic movie and like properly creepy. And actually, the book, the book, I was surprised that it got across that really eerie creepiness of the shark which i wasn't i didn't know how that would translate in the book but the rest of the book is a bit it's very of its time it's quite it's quite pulpy but it's quite you know it's quite sexist and racist and yeah i was sort of like not so sure about the book oh. but the movie the movie is like so good mine is little fires everywhere oh i'm actually in the middle of the adaptation right now i love the adaptation so much and i'd only read the book probably nine months before that. Yeah. So we're both still quite fresh in my mind because I guess that's the only thing is that a lot of the time you will have read a book so far yeah. um, away from when an adaptation or a film comes out that you sort of forget what kind of the book version as opposed to the TV or movie version. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love, I think maybe I just love Reese with a spoon, but I also feel like I understood the adaptation more than I understood the book. Yeah. It was easier to like um, understand the messaging and understand the characters in the adaptation as opposed to the book. Ah, I also liked the Pretty Little Liars television show more than I liked the book series. Oh, I remember you telling me that at the yeah. time. Actually. And there are some adaptations that I feel like hold their own with the the with the books. Like for me, like Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson adaptations, like they stand up right next to the book, and like they're both wonderful. And they're what about Hunger Games? Did you read Hunger Games? Yes, yes. So I, I well, I think again, I, I really like the films and the books. So I think they're both. Yeah, they're both really good. It must be so hard when a book's like very successful to make sure that you get the adaptation or the movie. Like definitely. And everyone was seemed to be talking about it and how great this was, and I was like. I have to find this, I have to find these books and, and yeah, and then I picked it up and I was blown away. Same with Gone Girl actually. Gone I Girl, know. it felt oh. like everyone suddenly was talking about it and I was like, what, where did this come from? I must find it. And then I loved, I loved, yeah. Yeah, I, loved I read that literally in like one day and the yeah. minute I finished the book, I downloaded the film. I think I was on holiday as well and it was like sunny out and I was like, no, I must go inside. Yeah. Open my laptop and download the film and now just watch the film even though I've just finished reading the book. Yeah. Okay, never have I ever had a reader know more about my book than me. I have to drink this. <laughs> I guess yes and no. Like you know like your book more than anyone and you even know the bits you've taken out or the bits you've altered or like yeah. earlier on I said something about Magpie Society to my brother. Then I was like, oh wait, no, we changed that. <laughs> that character never did that in the end. Yeah. And I'm like, I like forget like where we've updated it. I know, um, I know. But at the same time, like I'll have to message you sometimes and be like, what did we end up calling that character again? Because yeah. once you've written it all, 
sent it off, it's not like we're like rereading it all the time. <laughs> I know. No, it's so true. And sometimes like it's less true with my quest study, but like some of my other books, like you finish the writing and then it's like it's like still another year before it comes out. So sometimes I've literally had questions or someone will read me a passage of the book and I'd be like, did I actually write that? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Literally can't remember. It's really yes. embarrassing. Someone says something about your book and you're like, oh, did I do that? Oh, I must be really clever. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> a great line. <laughs> yeah, what a great line. Who ever wrote that? So that's the, the brilliance of having a co-author. I could be like, Zoe, that, that line, that's yours because it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. And I suppose the people that have enjoyed it will always take something away that might mean more to them than us when we wrote it, if that makes sense. So I don't know, a particular line or a particular paragraph yeah. that really stood out to them. To them, yeah, it meant something to them. Was just, you know, in the writing process. Never have I ever got emotional writing a chapter of my own book. Oh, oh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have. No? Well, for Magpie, I definitely didn't because I was more like excited and yeah. like it was scary in places and like mysterious in places. I didn't ever feel like there was any moments where I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, to be fair, there was one, there was one scene I wrote, I think I actually wrote to you like on uh, WhatsApp or, or voice get, or sent a voice note uh, after I wrote it. And it was uh, the scene where there's no spoilers or anything, but they're, just, they're walking along the cliffs. And I remember writing that scene and I was just like, oh, I felt really like overwhelmed when I was writing that because the yeah. sort of characters are like having, they've just had like their proper bonding moment. And in fact, you know, that's one of the like, the best scenes I think you I think you and I have talked about that. Like just before that happens, they have a really great scene, Ivy and Audrey together. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really fun to write, great fun. And then it's sort of, they become a bit more introspective and they're, they're like French, they're getting to know each other a bit more and their friendship's deepening. And I got a bit, as I was writing it, I got a bit like, oh my, our two like, they're so like, yeah, and each other's throats all the time, and now like you're starting to see those bonds of friendship like coming together, and that was really yeah. like, sweet to write. I, for sure, I definitely get moments like that. I just yeah. don't get any like. See, I took a yeah, moment. No, 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 no like, tears. Yeah, the tears. But yeah, yeah, I definitely had moments of that for sure. Yeah. And never have I ever embarrassed myself when meeting an author that I love. You done that? <laughs> you? Oh my god, I really want to know who and what happened. <laughs> For some reason, everything is coming back to Game of Thrones, but... Uh, <laughs> I love how you start off with, yeah, I really don't like Jon Snow. <laughs> I, really I, like like Snow. So these I mean, th these books meant, I mean a lot to me, I guess. <laughs> oh, I love that, oh, though. Oh my god. Yeah, and um, so when I, when I got to meet George, it was like like a pivotal moment in my life, you know, it was like one of those big, even though it was in a work capacity, but it was still like one of those like, oh my god, like I'm gonna embarrass myself. And I did sort of embarrass myself because I, you know, told him at that point I was just got the publishing contract for my first ever book. So of course, like baby author, I was like, I'm about to publish a book and you know, to this great author, you know, best selling oh. author for many times. And I was like, this is my book. And he, yes, I hate Jon Snow. Yeah. By the way, what are you doing? By the way, write more. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, oh, that was the last one. I, I actually uh, had saw one, one more from, I watched an example that they'd done before that was quite good. And I wanted to ask you, which is, was never have I ever read somewhere really weird? Read, read somewhere anywhere? weird? Yeah. I mean, I know where you're going to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> up a mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amy reads really high up, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> in the death zone. <laughs> yeah, in the death zone. I like that outside feels quiet, but it's not fully quiet. I was actually going to say that the weirdest place that I've ever read, probably, is I, I guess I was in my like early 20s and uh, like my friends really wanted to go out like on a night out clubbing. And I was like, I don't really want to go clubbing. And they were like, come on, let's go clubbing. I was like, oh. And I like literally had my Kindle in my purse. And they're like, let's go to the club. And so we went in the club and I literally like sat down on a chair in the club. You and did not <laughs> and like preach in the club. <laughs> yeah, in the club. <laughs> in the club, like in a corner. Like, what? I'm like, no, go, go dance. I'm like, no, I'm just this this book is really exciting. <laughs> you know how much I wish I knew you back then because I would have <laughs> sat right next to you with my Kindle, you know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us in our clubbing corner. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of club. Thank you so 
much for watching. The Magpie Society One for Sorrow is available to buy now. One for Sorrow is a modern gothic murder mystery set against the backdrop of an elite boarding school where not only secrets are buried. And for more videos like this one, please subscribe to the platform.